Good evening, everyone. We normally go live at 9 o'clock, but 7 o'clock is uh, the set time for this evening because of a special guest Dr. Sean has arranged for us. Uh, we got Watchful and Sean with us tonight. How are you, Watchful? I'm doing good. Yeah, I mean, Satan's attacking us and attacking those around us, our family. <laughs> uh, things, you know, are, are, are terrible from a physical perspective, but from a spiritual perspective, we're, we're triumphing. So. <laughs> oh, I think we just lost Sean. No! Uh, oh, here he is. He's calling back. <laughs> there you are. There he is. You you computer just I'm shut telling down. You, it, Satan is on the attack. Yeah. Oh, just, no doubt about it. Well, when you hear Rick, when you hear Rick, you understand why he's after us. Because yeah, uh, you know, this, this is going to rock your world. It's interesting how that works too. Um, uh, abnormal stuff will start happening that tries to hinder the technology and this and that from preventing the show from happening. And it's uh, it's interesting to see it because it, it doesn't make any sense when it does happen. And yeah, it's, yeah. It, it becomes evidently clear that there are forces working against us to stop the message that we're getting out. And yeah. it's clear that we were reaching folks. And I didn't realize to which magnitude, but I took call after call after call today from folks that were so appreciative that we've been able to help them and their mother and it was really warming. You know, I often wonder, are we actually reaching folks if, if our audience is just our little group, but there's uh, a lot more people out there that we're reaching that just don't speak up. So it's uh, it's really heartwarming to hear their, hear their testimonies. Uh, yeah. A, gen a gentleman called me earlier from West Virginia that uh, he told me a story for about 30 minutes about how um, we've helped him and his mother it was just awesome to hear. Hmm. How about that? Hey, mm -hmm. uh, right ch chat is just perked right up. Uh, hello to Leilani. Thank you so much. And hello to everybody there. Uh, big waves to everybody, Debbie. And why well, you, it was just, oh, Janet, I'm so sorry um, <laughs> that you're suffering with a headache and that you may not make it through. Well, I'll tell you this, we're praying against that headache and we just pray that um, that God will give you give you relief from that. Um, one thing I remember my neurologist told me, he said, most headaches originate from uh, dehydration, ironically. Hmm. I was hmm. shocked to hear that. And that makes once sense. I did a little better. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, uh, he, he told me that 79% uh, of the population is chronically dehydrated. Yeesh. They are. It is. Yeah. There's yeah, there's I, a way to test it too. You can do it with the skin on your hand. Make yeah, sure this you, little pull it up thing. Yeah. What you do is that skin should snap right back. If you pull yeah. that skin up and it slowly goes down, you're That's dehydrated. Mine does. Mine does. Yeah, I'm dehydrated for sure. Chronically. Yeah, and, and not having enough water makes a drastic difference. Yeah. It, it, it really does. As a matter of fact, I've noticed the more water I drink, the more energy I will get versus drinking more coffee. I just like yeah. coffee though. Yeah. If folks have, you know, at any point, if you suffer from uh, energy issues and stuff of that nature, most of the time it originates with your hydration level. And the little trick I just showed you with testing your body's hydration level, that's a, uh, that's a real thing. That's not just hocus pocus. You can literally, oh, yeah. It will literally either snap back or slowly go back. And yeah. if it snaps back, you're hydrated. If it slowly goes down, you definitely need more water. Yeah, I do. And that's exactly what happens with me. And uh, sometimes because of my illness. You know what, Doug? I do. I take uh, take magnesium. Doug Wallace suggested magnesium. I just started taking, uh, my doctor asked me to do that, uh, to take uh, magnesium. And so I'm doing that. And I am drinking a lot of fluids. I only have usually, well, maybe two cups of coffee a week. I always have it before the Monday show. And I have it on Friday because my, my buddies, uh, my dear friends get together and uh, on Friday morning and we have breakfast. And so I'll drink coffee then sometimes. But it's three bucks now. <laughs> it's three bucks now. Wow. So I'm going to probably pivot to water. Yeah. I probably drink a dozen cups a day. 
Oh, no kidding. Holy uh, moly. Wow. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me, though. Uh, I'll drink a cup yeah. before bed. Um, I, I don't That's know amazing. It is, but it's... Uh, for some reason, I like the, the black coffee. I don't drink it with any sugar or anything like that. Yeah, Gottschild um, said she was in the hospital. Um, oh, no. I hope you're okay. We're What we're doing is kind of uh, killing a little time because our guest is going to show up here shortly yeah, because it's mostly about um, what he has to say. So watchful. Anything you want to talk about, I'm open to it, brother. D- did I tell you what happened to me after my last 21-day fast? Mm-mm. I think I, I I think I've mentioned it, but you, it's not something that people usually remember. So I was there were two things I said I wanted in heaven. It was coffee and tacos. Those are my two favorite <laughs> things in the entire world. The only thing that like if I got to heaven and that's all there was, it would be heaven for me. And yeah. after my last 21 day fast, I no Stop longer like coffee. coffee. Wow. It doesn't taste good to me anymore. I used to love coffee. I used to love the flavor. I used to love the smell. But after that yeah, 21 day fast, I, I no longer like the taste and I no mm. longer like the smell. It's the weirdest thing. You know, I've really never wow. liked the taste. <laughs> it's um, it's like folks that drink beer. You know, I'm not a beer yeah. drinker, but when I did drink it before, it was just seemed so nasty and you just get used to it. But yeah. Um, same, you know, especially I drink coffee, just black with nothing in it. So it's definitely an acquired taste. I guess yep, I drink tea now. Used, I guess I'm I love tea. tea. I'm, me- I'm drinking mint tea this morning. So, so I love tea and I, and I'll tell you, I'm struggling. I, I would probably not drink coffee. Um, I love the smell. I love, I really love the smell. The aroma is amazing. I love the taste. I love making it the whole process. I put a shot of espresso in there and it, you know, I just love it. However, I know, uh, I love tea, but I can't find good tea. I, I'm, I'm in the Wilmington, North Carolina area and you just can't find good tea. Most of it is just <laughs> dust and particles. It's not That's the right. actual high end leaf. And so you're getting a pretend flavor and, uh, I, I got to do something. I got to figure that out. Hey, while yeah. I'm, while I'm talking, I, I, I uh, want to remind screen's people, really dark, Sean. Yeah, I know my light just went out. I don't know why. I have no idea. Uh, let me see. Wow. No, I mean, Lonnie. it's it's better now, but for some reason it keeps going dark to bright, dark to bright, dark to bright. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's it's crazy. Um, hmm. Let's see. How about now? A little light yeah. on the cake. Yeah, a little yeah that's great. Yeah. I, I uh, so anyway, I wanted to encourage people to watch today's this morning show. The feedback I'm getting from that show with Mike and Bonnie. Uh, it's really tremendous and it's just pouring in. And so if you didn't see that show, uh, watch it back on the podcast. It's fantastic. They were, they, you know, what's funny. They were worried about, I talked to Bonnie and uh, Bonnie and Mike were worried that, you know, they would go about 10 minutes, you know, they were go uh, 10, 10 minutes and 45 minutes later, you know, um, we're, we're still going. And it was really beautiful. It was, it was really lovely. The, the, the way they tell their story mm-hmm. about their son, PJ, and um, Rockin' for Heroes, it's pretty powerful. And I, w- I was close to them throughout that whole, that whole thing. And, and ever since, we, we, you know, Bonnie comes to visit us. Uh, Mike will come to visit us. Bonnie and Mike, if we're lucky, will come visit us uh, throughout the year. And... Uh, you know, if, if I was up to it, I'd go out and visit them in Tucson. They're they're amazing people. They're amazing it's re- people. It was really an incredible story how God yeah. works through loss and grief, where it, it becomes clearly evident that everything happens for a reason. Yeah. They yeah. they they lost their son, but at the same time, so much came from it. So much yeah. positivity, and um, connections with other folks to spread the word in the kingdom. It's, uh, wow. it kind of reminds me of the, the story of Job. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the thing is that we didn't talk about today was PJ, you know, osteosarcoma usually attach, attacks much younger. Um, it, it, uh, was detected in, in PJ's body at the age of 16. And most, most people don't live as long as PJ. PJ lived to be 29 years old. And let me tell you what, PJ lived every minute of those 29 years. He was funny. 
Um, he was wild. I mean, you, you better look out when PJ's around. And, um, mm. it was, it was just fun. He was a great guy. And of course his wife, an amazing, beautiful woman. And, um, she was the love of his life. And he, you know, he did, he lived a lot. Uh, and Bonnie and Mike saw to it that he got to live, uh, as full a life as whatever number of years he would be given. Wow. And so I, I just want to say the people in chat this morning were lovely. And since, um, I see Paul there, he was in, uh, Leilani was there several, I'm seeing several pop up there and it was really, really beautiful. And I, and I, I want the people in chat to know how much I appreciate what they add to this. And, um, it, it means a lot. It's, it's a, it's a big deal for you to take your time and to join us and to join on the Monday and any of the, any of the podcasts, it's a big deal. And it's a blessing. You all are a blessing, no doubt. Yeah, that's for sure. So I've, I've got a series, uh, I'm about to begin recording and, um, it, it deals with divorce, what the Bible actually says about divorce. And, and, uh, in my counseling practice, I had an awful lot of, uh, Christians or followers of the way really struggling with guilt and shame and a lot of other things. And they, and I get asked about divorce a lot. And, mm. uh, so I, I began a study, which took about almost a year and a half, um, a doctorate level study and original language study in uh, Hebrew and, uh, Aramaic, and then also a culture study. Um, and then working through how things were trans, I'll say transliterated from Hebrew, Hebrew and Aramaic to Greek. Now I'll say, um, there's a lot of reason for that. Uh, the reason why it didn't transfer for over as accurately as we would like. And as we're, you know, of course we we're finding now is because there, there weren't a lot of experts really. There just weren't a lot of experts. And so now there are a lot more and, uh, it's, it's really a powerful thing. And so there's some people in chat right now talking about they were, they've been divorced, uh, one Larry was divorced since 2009 and folks really, really struggle. And, um, I, I really hope it'll bring a lot of hope to a lot of people. Now there's going to be a segment of folks that look at what I bring to them as being, uh, maybe heretical in, by comparison to their, to their learning. And I'm, I'm not, um, casting any aspersions upon the teachers that teach, you know, the traditional, um, uh, position, the church, traditional church position on divorce. Um, they, they believe what they believe, uh, very firmly. They're, they're, you know, and I, Hey, listen, I, I get it. And nothing against the pastors and, uh, the teachers who, who taught them. I, I have no animus toward them at all. It was quite a discovery for me. And um, it's pretty intense. It's an intense study, and, and I'm really eager to do that. We're going to talk about relationship with God. Uh, this will be a series on, on my podcast, um, Relationship with God. And that relationship, as it relates to how we are to live uh, versus the, you know, the get saved just for the goal of salvation. And um, I, I think that's going to really be a blessing to a lot of people because it's going to help them the time that we have here to really pursue hard after God and to receive, you know, it's one thing to, uh, to pursue, but when we pursue him, he, it's, it's, he comes our way even more. So he loves to be pursued. So, um, I I'm, I'm so looking forward to it. We, we have, uh, hundreds, literally hundreds of different podcasts ready to go as soon as we get some equipment you know get some equipment in and improve what we have and we'll be ready to rock and roll <laughs> yeah 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 you got a lot of material tons yeah well, a lot of years worth of stuff and and uh when i first got hurt and got sick and you know we got our prognosis um at first you know i dropped out of the public view and thinking well you know here we go this is it and, and, uh, 
but then I didn't die. <laughs> I haven't died yet. Uh, so we're, <laughs> we're almost nine years in to after where I was supposed to die. And obviously wow. my situation is dire. Um, but Hey, it's, uh, I keep on praise keep God on going, keep on going. Praise God. He calls he, me. Yeah. He, he must want you here. It's not on, it's not on your time. It's on his time. So sure. Yeah, for Amen. sure. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, it's, when, I've been, I've been expecting you to pass for years now. You just, uh, you keep coming back stronger. I tell you, I've been close, uh, several times where the, the doctors, uh, have had, you know, the conversation with me and with yeah. my wife and, uh, and with my son and, you know, be ready. It's, it's going to, it's coming soon. And then, you know, we just somehow or another, we keep, keep going and, and I'm okay with that. When he calls me, Hey, um, Rick's calling in. All right. You're in for fun folks. I'm telling you right now, he may take some shots at me. Probably will. <laughs> Let's see here. He's probably got some hoity-toity setup. That's what it is. Look at hey, the Rick. hoity-toity setup he's got. What's up, fellas? Hey, so Hello, good Rick. to see you, Rick. What's going on? So good to have you. Hoity-toity, huh? Yeah, hoity-toity. <laughs> I said it. I said it. Hey, and listen, when are you going to update your, uh, your, your portraits from 1983? Maybe do some new ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You look great. He looks so young. Every time I see him, honestly, every time I see him, and it must be something about Texas. I don't know. But every time I see Rick, he looks young. Now, bear in mind, he has a beautiful <laughs> wife named Kara, who is amazing. And his children, I hope I don't get choked up talking about his kids. I adore his children. When I saw photos of them now, oh my gosh, <laughs> it got me. It took my breath away. I just couldn't believe it because, you know, I got to see him as young kids, you know, and, uh, amazing, 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 amazing. The secret is the whiskey. I'm just telling you it's, uh, it's a special whiskey. Yeah. Good to know. It's a special uh, whiskey. Right. I'm going to try yeah. to get some of that. Yeah. Garrison brothers is uh, right between us and the campus. So it keeps me sane. Uh, no, I'm kidding, man. No. Hey, yeah. you know what? I was just thinking about you yesterday. I was sitting at a, uh, in, in, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And I met this, uh, this guy that went to the Naval Academy. Do you remember taking my oldest son, Trey and me on the tour of the Naval Academy all those years I do. ago? Yeah. yeah we got uh, a private yeah. tour of the Naval Academy for you. Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. Pays to know people, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't so, read your hat. What, what's your hat say? It says Sea Hag, Sea Hag Marina in uh -huh. Steenhatchee, Florida. Yeah. Uh, one of my dearest friends, um, she and her husband, Charlie, they founded and owned St uh, Sea Hag Marina in Steenhatchee. And they, um, it's an amazing place. It's like a, it is a resort. They have places to stay. They have boat rentals. They have um, charters. It, it, it's a humongous store, uh, a bar, a tiki bar. Uh, cool. it's, it's a, it's an amazing place and you'd never yeah. guess, but it's huge. So I, they, she sends me some swag every now and then and I'll wear it. Nice. Nice. Hey, if I All had right. some Patriot, if I had some Patriot Academy swag, I'd well, wear as it soon too. as you said that, I, I made a middle note. I made a middle there you note. Go. Mail. Miss K, Miss K will hey. have a, Miss K will get a message. Hey, I need a, I need a Patriot. You, I need a Patriot, uh, wife beater. There we go. Yeah, I don't think they have them. I'm not sure they have them. We'll have to have one so, made just for you guys. Yeah, I so would let me, it. Rick, let me introduce you. This is Watchful um, with the cap on and the long beard. Um, that's Watchful. Nice to meet you, and, Rick. What's up, and, man? And, and then uh, you'll see with the hat turned around backwards, um, looking studly as always, <laughs> my dear friend. And uh, he's been like a little brother to me for many, many years since he was little. And I, I love his family, and it's Christopher Brock, world-renowned photographer, um, literally one of the top photographers in the world, and doing amazing things, and Watchful's doing amazing things. And so we're just excited to have you on here. Now, listen, if you're a listener, let me just tell you a little bit about... Now, I will tell you this right off the top. Um, I know Rick prefers the short bio. I know that he does. <laughs> but here's the bottom line. Even his long John's bio. About to make up a lot of stuff. I'm just telling, warning y'all. He's gonna. This is all made up. He's gonna. Oh no! I was there for yeah. a lot of it. It's the truth. 
let me say this, <laughs> Rick, uh, Rick's bio and his CV. I'm going to tell you something. The guy, he was born awesome and gaining ground ever since. <laughs> and so we became dear friends. Wow. Um, Rick is known as America's Constitution Coach, and he is a former Texas State Representative, national speaker. And when I say national speaker, let me tell you something. His whole family, when I can remember even Rhett, uh, when he was little, they would get up in front of thousands of people and blow their minds. So this is this is what kind of kid, kid um, and he's got four of the most amazing kids I've ever seen in my life. Um, he and Kara have done an amazing job. So he and his family, they travel the nation. They bring America's forgotten history and heroes to life. And it's fun. It's entertaining. Um, it's, it's just exciting. And, and what it emphasizes is our moral and constitutional heritage. Now, you, if you've tuned in here because you saw that Rick was going to be on, you know he co-hosts a smash hit national daily radio program, Wall Builders Live with David Barton, who my bookshelf is full of David Barton stuff. Um, original Intent, I would encourage you, if you ever buy a book, you want to learn about the founders. Original Intent's a great place to start. Just absolutely unbelievable. And here's what else. Um, Rick, as you can see by his studly Texasness, he, uh, his family produced Chasing American Legends. And that's an entertaining reality show where another dear friend of mine, did I introduce you to Brad? Did I introduce Brad to you or no? No, no. He, he Brad found us. Uh, man, I knew I knew Brad a couple years before we met. But um, oh, no kidding. But he's great. Have you had him on? You need to have him. on I, this show. I, yep. Hey, listen, I haven't had him on yet because our lawyers don't have the disclaimer <laughs> all finished yet for Brad. But Brad Stein. <laughs> Every time we do a live show, I'm like like a, a comedy and constitution on stage. When he's on stage, I'm at the back of the room or backstage, just waiting, praying, to say something that's going to oh, get yeah. us all in trouble. Yeah. 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 He's been on my other show, but he's not been on he's not been on this one. And so the Green family, um, they investigate the history of our country and they unravel the mysteries. And this American story is so much better than people even know because they're not being taught that. You know what else too? Rick is the author and executive producer of Constitution Alive. What a great name. Love that when name. You came up with the name. Come on, let's tell the truth now, Sean. <laughs> America's I was, doing, I was doing this constitution class all over the country and the and the class is pretty entertaining. I will say I hate boring history, but my marketing needed a little help. And Sean brings me out to Delaware and has this flyer that just rocked it. I mean, it was awesome. And I stole it and, and I've used it ever since. It's been like, hey, I can't, take the, I can't take the credit. Uh, Jerry and Bryn, uh, well, Bryn Sellers, Jerry Summers, God rest his soul. Um, he is passed. Uh, but uh, he and Bryn came up with that. And so we were kicking around names and I said, Constitution Alive and boom. So hmm. it's, uh, it is honestly the most engaging and entertaining study of the United States Constitution, as well as, and this is the important part, biblical citizenship in modern America, biblical instruction for a free people. Now, I mentioned hmm. Kara. Rick is the founder. He, he married way up. Um, Rick is the founder of the Patriot Academy. And listen, if you, unless you're under a rock, you've heard of the Patriot Academy. It's an amazing, amazing leadership training. It's elite at a very elite level leadership training. Um, it's a program that specializes in applied civics with biblical, historical and constitutional foundation. And through their more than 15,000 constitution coaches, they're training and empowering adults across the nation to educate their communities about the constitution. And I want to say, Listen, I could go on and on, but we'd be done with the show, and uh, well, we don't. They want need that. to need to educate the leaders of our country is what they need to do. Yeah, yeah. amen to that. Yeah, amen to that. And we're getting some. I've got I've got about a dozen members of Congress now that that have been through one of our programs, and about I don't know. We probably got a hundred and fifty state reps and senators across the country, and then. Um, hundreds of school board members and city council but guys that's a drop in the bucket i mean you've got 
I, I think 10,000 is the is the tipping point. We need 10,000 candidates out there that have been trained well in the Constitution. Hmm. So we got a long way to go, but we're For chipping sure. away at it. For sure. Wow. So so the world is on fire. The, we're, we're on fire. There's, this this country is on fire and no one seems well maybe a few notice that the country's on fire but you are leading the charge you and your team are leading the charge and i have to say uh, doing an amazing job so what's going on what's on your heart that is just such a massive burden that you just feel like hey people need to hear this well, to be honest, Sean, it's bittersweet. I, I, I'm, I'm, um, you know me. I'm an optimist. I'm, I'm, I'm used. I'm always going to see the silver lining, and uh, despite the destruction and the and the Marxism that has uh, infiltrated the entire country, despite the fact that the left owns every major institution in America, from education to every political institution to half the pulpits or more, and uh, all of the all of the rest, despite all of that, um, I really think we have a massive opportunity here. The window is open for us to convert millions of of Americans that have been they've been enjoying the blessings of liberty. They're not evil. They're not on the on the wrong side. They just been on the sideline because they just, you know, frankly, enjoyed the fruit of uh, of the labor of previous generations. We're on the fumes of the sacrifice of previous generations. We have a window of opportunity to wake those people up and, and get them to the principles of liberty. I, I just think we have to we have to strike now. I mean, it's um, yes. you guys know. We probably talk about this a bunch, but we've all seen the cycle, right? Or talk about the cycle of, of tough times make tough men, tough men make soft, you know, for good times, good times make for soft men, soft men make for, for tough times. And we're just now entering the tough times, as you yeah. know well, it get a whole lot worse. But what I'm seeing is millions of people waking up from just, just a little bit of pain, man. This is just, we're just dipping our toe in the pool, but there's enough pain now from the bad policy decisions of the Marxists that people are going, whoa, there's got to be a better way. I mean, people that don't that may not share my faith or, or, or any of those things, but they're going, wait, we're going to carve up kids. We're going we're to take a 12 year old and cut off her breast. Are you kidding me? What What is going on yeah. in the country right now? And so they're actually awake. But we have to come in with truth at this point, because the Petri dish where bad government grows is civic ignorance. And when you allow that ignorance to grow into a virus like what we've seen, it spreads like wildfire. And the immune booster, the the, the 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 solution for that is civic literacy. You have to show people truth, shake them out of their slumber, show them that there is a better way, that the American formula is the best the world has ever known. Flawed, absolutely made, you know, this nation was created by humans. So therefore, it was created by flawed men and women. Uh, but despite that, the best the world has ever known. And and if, if people are wondering whether this system is worth saving, I always ask a very simple country boy test because I'm just a simple country boy. Uh, are people trying to get in or are they trying to get out? And and that should tell you right there whether or not this is a great nation. Nobody's digging tunnels to get out of this country. They're digging exactly. tunnels because the American dream is what everybody wants. And we're about to yeah. lose it because of our lack of attention to the to the principles that actually produce the American dream. Well said. Yeah. So what's what's the antidote? I know the Patriot Academy is near and dear to you. It has grown immensely from when it started. I've got to see it. And it's relatively uh, the early times. My yeah. son, Doyle, uh, attended several sessions and he loved it. And, and it was powerful. I mean, I've been to graduations and well, I don't you, you don't call them graduations, right? What do you call them? I want to call them the right thing. Well, we, we, we do have, an, have a graduation, uh, but we also the, the part that I like is the is the torch passing. I mean, it, we're, we're yes. actually called Torch of Freedom Foundation. And so yeah. we have hmm. a ceremonial passing the torch from guys like you that put it all on the line, willing to die for freedom, standing in front of that kid that's 19, 20, 21 years old, saying, hey, I was willing to die for your freedom. Now it's time for you to go live it and really challenge them to make the most of their freedom and not just be a spoiled American brat, but actually go out there and live this thing. Doesn't mean they have to go serve in the military. Doesn't mean they have to be a you know first responder or have to go be a you know public servant, but it means wherever you're planted, whatever the passion is God's given you, if you make music, do it the best that you can. If you do movies or you're in the pulpit or whatever, do it the best you can, but do it with with purpose and actually recognize you're part of of the greatest nation in history. And you've got a 
you've got a challenge ahead of you to preserve this thing. And, 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 and I would say that Patriot Academy is just a small piece of the, of the big picture. I hate to sound like, you know, no, I don't. I like Churchill. I sound just like Churchill. We had to fight them on the beaches. We had to fight them everywhere. There's no place. There's no, no part of the American culture at this point where there's not a war going on, where the Marxists have not yeah. stepped into. They are, they're smart. I mean, I, 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 I have to give them credit. They've been at it yeah. for 80 years in the trenches, scratching and clawing to turn this nation into a Marxist hellhole. And, and, and they have taken ground. They have taken significant ground. And so we cannot leave anything off limits, which is why when a Patriot Academy kid comes to our program, I don't say, hey, go run for office. I, I, I say, let's find out what the desire is God's put in your heart. And it may be that you're going to make music and be like an Aaron Lewis and write a song like, am I the only one that's going to uh, wake up Americans to realize they need to fight? It may be that you're going to go make movies. You're going to go into the pulpit or business or politics, whatever it is. But, man, you got to go in with a mission oriented. I'm going to spend the next 50 years of my life turning this thing around. So, yeah. so Rick, mm -hmm. Paul, Paul from Minnesota asked a great question in chat. What does... Uh, what does fully awake in the great awakening look like? Hmm. How do Man. we make that happen? And what does it look like? How do we know, you know, we look to we look to our left, look to our right. And, you know, we, we want to have soldiers there. We want to have people we know yeah. are capable and are committed. Um, what does it look like? How do we even recognize that? <sighs> Well, I think Thomas Paine helped us with this a lot. You know, freedom's, you know, such a celestial item that heaven puts a price on it. And I think if people aren't willing to sacrifice, they aren't, they don't fully realize how bad this is and, and how important it is. You know, I, I was at a dinner, man, it's been almost two years now. And um, Rick Santorum was speaking, a, a former U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania. And he's, he looks out at us and this is Sean, it's basically a room full of, of us, right? And people that are in, media or, or they're, they're doing something out there to try to turn this thing around. Packed house. And he looks at us and he goes, whatever you're doing, it's not enough. Nobody in this room is sacrificing. Everybody in here has got it pretty easy. And I'm sitting there getting hacked off. I'm like, dude, you have no idea, man. I was like, you know, hundred live events last year, 700 media hits. I'm missing time with my grandkids. I'm all over the, you know, I'm doing all, and I'm thinking, this guy, had, I, I was actually mad at him for saying it. <laughs> and, and then he starts saying stuff you and I say all the time, right? I mean, we know the stories of the sacrifice of the founding fathers, but he, he starts going through some of that. And I realized, man, he's right. He's right. Mm -hmm. I, I moan and, and complain if I don't get my upgrade to first class for free, you know, and, and I got a flying cut. George Whitfield rode a horse up and down the coast of this country and, and, and preached 17,000 sermons here. Uh, to lay the seeds for which our nation was, you know, built upon. And I'm whining because wow. I didn't get first class. I mean, listen, we got it so easy. We don't know what sacrifice is. So I think if somebody's truly awake today, they're sacrificing. They're giving up the golf game. They're selling the, the rental house and donating to candidates and causes. They're helping organizations like Patriot Academy or Wall Builders or, or whatever it might be, make that next level step of, of investment in, in the country. They're they're taking the time to run for office. You know, it's a it's a pain to run. People think running for office is this glamorous, you know, thing. Yeah. You go serve on a school board or a city council or even state legislature, you're sacrificing to do that. In Texas, you don't get paid squat. I nearly went broke being a legislator. I mean, I just think it's it's measured by sacrifice. Lives, fortune, sacred honor. Are they giving of their time, giving of their money? Are they willing to say what's true regardless of what's who's gonna cancel them or or what you know what that what that's going to look like, you know, letting the chips fall where they may. So for me, that's that's the measurement. Are they all in or not? I'm Amen. like Sam Adams, man. Sam Adams said, if you don't, if you're not willing to do this stuff, he, he said it this way. He said, crouch down and lick the hand that feeds you, and may we never remember you were our countrymen. I'm just tired mm -hmm. of messing around, man. I'm not looking for sheep. I'm looking for fellow lions. And uh, if they're not if they're not all in, man, I don't, I don't think they're fully awakened to this. Kip, uh, Kip Shillam, uh, who is a great contributor to this show and to Two Witnesses Live, absolutely an amazing mind, um, says that the word says we're to occupy until he comes and to work until he comes. And so many, you know, I see churches and I've gotten to speak in a bazillion churches and I know you speak in churches, you know, every week. And, I, you know, I, I wrote a book. And it was, uh, it was not well received by a lot of pastors. And, 
I like that. When book. I'm, oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that. So, and it deals with, um, it, it's entitled Excellence Killed the Church, How Mediocrity Destroyed America. Yeah. And in the modern church, I see in the modern church, and, and this is nothing against, you know, studly preachers who wear jeans, and, and, I'm, and I'm for that. Look, if I could pull off skinny jeans, I would. Um, I mean, if I could get them on, I, I would put them, I would. I'd look, I don't know if I, I probably wouldn't know. No, I don't look, I wouldn't look good. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. So everyone that the vomit has up in the throat, just you're okay. I'm not going to complete that image for you. But uh, so I, I talked a lot about pastors who are just afraid, you know, they, they want to keep their job. It's a hard yeah. job. It's a hard job. It's, it's risky because you got a lot of people that they could get hacked off at you over one word, just like our listeners, you know, this, this channel has almost 16,000. How old is this? Two months old, this channel? Uh, 16,000. Three, three months. Around three months old, 16,000 subscribers. Some of their videos have over 300,000 views. And, but, you know, one thing I've always said is, is that you may say one thing and it may be completely true and someone will hear it. It'll hit them wrong. It'll offend some sense sensitivity that they have. And despite standing up and saying, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm tough. I'm in the battle. I'm, I'm a warrior, a uh, warrior for Christ, a uh, warrior for freedom, warrior for Liberty. They will first they'll attack and then they'll fade away. The problem is, pastors in the church not my pastor my pastor is amazing but a lot of pastors are terrified of losing their job they're terrified of losing their security because it's so uh, tenuous in a church you have however big the church is that's how many bosses you have and there they're used to be a time shepherds, but yeah <clears throat> say again they're hirelings instead of shepherds but yeah exactly yeah exactly so, so I see in the church, I see a lot of people that are afraid. They're afraid to speak up. They're afraid to talk about, um, and our pastor at Grace Community Topsoil, he's not afraid. Steve will talk yeah. about politics. He will stand strong and firm. And all six foot five of them, he'll be standing up straight and tall. And he'll say, this is what we believe here. You don't have to believe it, but this is what we believe. And, um, and you know, pastors are terrified of having the 501c3 taken away. And I know you've talked about that. You know, it, it doesn't happen. It's not happening. These people that, that, that they say, oh no, we as a church, we can't speak out about this or that because that's politics. They'll take away our 501c3. And I will say this, um, that's why whenever I go to churches, I take a love offering. It's, you know, if they, if they have it, if they don't have it, and if, as long as I can get there and get home, but the government has no business in the church. And I think that's part of the problem. Some of your speeches, you talk about that, um, how we cede power to the government when they don't have that power, but it mm -hmm. becomes a perceived power. And then we imbue them with the power when we don't do anything, when they abuse the power. Well, I think, I think the problem lies with some of these churches that maybe you're referencing is that they have their faith is lacking because if you really understand God is in full control you don't worry about what the government's going to do or how you're going to be attacked or how you're going to be canceled because it's in God's hands as long as you're mm -hmm. delivering that message and and following you know your heart and speaking the truth you shouldn't be worrying about being canceled because ultimately God's in control yeah, you, yeah, I you, agree. You hit on a big one right there because that's that's essentially the message Eric Metaxas has right now for the church and for yeah. the country. His letter to the American Church is, I think, one of the most important books of our lifetime. And and the documentary that that uh, Rachel and Simone made about the book is, is just phenomenal. Um, and he says exactly what you just said. And he actually says it even even <laughs> he goes a little further and basically says you have no faith. You're not uh, if you're not willing to speak truth, then you have no faith. If you truly believe what we say we believe you would not be um, hesitant to, to speak that truth. And it's for all the reasons you're saying, Sean, it's also just they've been lied to. They've been taught in the seminaries yeah. that, that politics is not supposed to be in the pulpit. And I always say, well, what, what is politics? 
I mean, Charles Finney back in the Second Great Awakening said that if 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 politics is corrupted, the pulpit's responsible for it. If 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 journalism and and entertainment and all these things are corrupted, the pulpit is responsible for it. He basically brings everything back to the pulpit and says if the church is not being salt and light, you know, if the salt's not in the meat, why why would we shock that the meat's spoiling? Well, the American meat is spoiling right now. The culture is falling apart because the salt has been kept in the shaker and the church has not done its job. And so to the listener or viewer that that said that we're supposed to occupy until he returns, we often forget that that when Jesus said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's, he's saying that in the Roman Empire, very different from America. So your job, your role, your your duty as a Christian citizen in that country was very different than here. Here in America, you don't have a choice. You're, you are Caesar. You are in charge. We, the people, are ultimately responsible for what our government looks like. And for the church to be silent in the face of evil, as Bonhoeffer said, um, that is evil itself. We have the answers. We have the, the the cure for what ails this nation and to not go out and speak to that. And for, for people to say to me, oh, we're just supposed to preach the gospel. And I'm like, wait a minute. The gospel is not to get somebody to walk the aisle and give their life to Christ. The gospel is, according to Jesus, not according to me or any of you guys, to make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. That's the Great Commission. And when Absolutely. we just give gospel state, you know, you get to go to heaven now. Here's your get out of out of hell free card. And then and then we don't tell them how to apply that or live that in, in here. And Jesus had a lot to say about politics. The Bible has a lot to say about politics. Politics, as Charles Finney said, here's the direct quote. Politics is part of a religion in a country such as this. And Christians must do their duty to their country as a part of their duty to God. God will bless or curse the nation according to the course Christians take in politics. He's basically saying it's no different. Politics is no different than work. And, and and home and, and, and school and everything. It's just part of our religion because the Lord is Lord over all of our life. And therefore, we leave nothing off the table. And we've been given this great instruction manual, guys. This is this is the answer book for everything in life. You would never leave a good sermon if if uh, if Sean gets up and preaches on how to be a good husband, a good a good wife, a good mother, a good father. You wouldn't drive away from that service where he's spoken and go, man, that was a great sermon. I wish I could use it tomorrow. Uh, at home, but, you know, separation of, of home and church. I mean, nobody would do that, but we Absolutely do that. No. How do you treat your neighbor? And last thing I know, I'm filibustering here, but politics <laughs> is nothing more than how do you treat your neighbor? And so for these yeah. people that say, I don't want Christianity influencing what's going on in the world, wouldn't you like to live in a country, in a neighborhood where everybody's treating each other the way they want to be treated? I think that's written down somewhere. Uh, yeah. It's probably a good idea, and it, it actually would create a good society. That's why even the non-Christian founding fathers, which there's only about 10 of them out of 250, but even they said Christianity makes the best citizens. So even though they didn't believe Jesus to be God, they still knew that the Bible made people treat each other well, made people obey the law and do things right and not steal, and you could do business deals and, and relationships and, and, and trust that there would be um, you know, that there would be fairness and that you would live up to your word. Last thing I said, that was the last thing, but one more thing, because I'm I'm mad about this one, especially we talked about the Naval Academy. Blind justice, equal justice, treating each other the same under the law, neither Jew nor Greek, rich and poor, treated the same in the courtroom. The fact that our Supreme Court would still say that it's OK at the military academies of this country to have a standard that is different based on the color of your skin is spitting on the grave of, grave of MLK. It's treating people based on the color of skin rather than on the content of their character. It is wrong. It is evil. It's at the heart of Marxism. It's got to change. We've got to get to biblical justice, not social justice. Biblical Amen. justice is blind justice, equal justice. We're all treated the same. Social justice said, which, says, which church should you go to? What color is your skin? Which political affiliation do you have? Are you rich or poor? And all those things matter, not what you actually did. And a free society won't last under that. So Amen. three wow. steps, three steps. What do you think three things people can do? Yeah. Um, anybody can do, look, you might not be able to do 10 things, but you can do three things. What are three things that the the listener listening right now and the people that will listen a week from now, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, what, what can they do? What do you recommend their steps be? Man, if I could give if I could give you three general things and then I'll give you a couple of specifics, but the three things are, and I sat in a war room with Kirk Cameron all day trying to figure out how to describe this. And we, this is what we came up with. Number one, saturate yourself in, in God's word. Okay. Everybody, Amen. I don't care if you're Christian or yep. not, 
It's just wisdom, man. Proverbs has more wisdom for life than anything else. Benjamin Rush, signer, the declaration, one of our most important founding fathers, says the Bible has more about the brain and the body and how things work than any any other book. So saturate yourself in, in truth and then build community, man. When none of us can live alone. This is a we're in a I would be so depressed, Sean, if I couldn't get around guys like you all the time like this, this iron sharpening hour we're doing right now. It's what keeps mm -hmm. me going. Build mm -hmm. community, find people that that share your values and that you can sharpen the countenance of and that you can be in this thing together and then third tend the garden take care of wherever god's planted you go take over that local school board take over that city council go 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 be a voice of reason in your church tend the garden where you and maybe it's just your kids maybe you just spend all your time raising up a generation in your home that gets this stuff so it's saturate in truth build community and tend the garden. And, and the specific I'll give you, and, and now this part is going to sound selfish, but we give this away for free, so I'm not getting any money out of this. Do a constitution class in your home or your church or wherever you want to, and that will help you build community. You'll be studying what, what you mentioned earlier, our biblical citizenship class. It basically says, what's the Bible say about how to treat your neighbor? How do you do, do a biblical citizenship thing? And then how do you do it in this country? How do you do it under our constitution properly peacefully how do you how do you properly do this thing so if you'll do that class for free go be a constitution coach sign up at our website it's free i can promise you seven thousand classes later a million people going through the classes we're now at twenty eight thousand constitution coaches with all of that i can tell you with absolute certainty you will get wisdom you'll build community and you'll get the tools you need to tend the garden Oh, that's awesome. That's even better than I thought I was going to get, which is what you always deliver. Listen, I know you got to pop smoke because you're a busy guy. Before you go, I want to say, please pass along my congratulations to you know who and you know who and Kara and you for number four on the way. Uh, I'm so excited. I can't stand it. I got my first grandchild in, in August and I'm losing my mind. I'm telling you. <laughs> It's the best job on the planet, man. No, I love being a dad, but being a grandpa, oh my gosh. It, it, Zig Ziglar used to always say, if we had known how much being grand, how fun grandparents was going to be, would have you know, uh, treated their parents better. Um, but but I enjoyed being a dad as well. So I think we treated their parents pretty, pretty well. But uh, man, you're right. Grandpa is the best job on the planet. What are your kids up to? Bring me up to speed. You know, we got them all in the in the family business, if you will. Uh, they're they're all part of the ministry now. So so Trey runs all the all the firearms training and constitutional defense, and and uh, you've got to smile when you hear that because you remember taking him as sixteen years old, seventeen <laughs> years old to the Naval Academy. Uh, Reagan and his wife Faith are also so Trey and Andrew have, and of course you know Andrew and her whole family up there. They've got three kiddos now. And uh, and so Reagan does all of our um, media and still produces. Wow. He produced Biblical Citizenship, and then Cameron's writing kids books. We got a bunch of kids books coming out that are going to make it fun for little children to learn patriotism. And then uh, and then Rhett is actually the producer of my show, The Tavern. That's why I got this big Viking mug right here. I do this in this set. It's um, basically revolutionary strategies and tactics for how to save the country. And awesome. uh, and we're all moving to Fredericksburg, man. We're we're building this campus in Fredericksburg. I'm still in Dripping Springs, but we're selling our place and we're going west, young man. We're too close oh. to Austin. I got to get out of We're just west of Weird right now. And I'm, I, 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 I was wondering. <laughs> I was wondering. Hey, let me say this. Um, you know, Christopher runs um, a, a place. I won't say the name because I don't know if I'm allowed, but um, in Kennesaw, Georgia, it's it's 100,000 square feet of freedom. Ooh. And there's a place there. I bet you we could fill that joint um we, we could he's tens of thousands of people he's had in there uh oh, for man. different rallies and stuff yeah so love to have you go to kennesaw georgia and light them up and i'll Dude, i'll find a way that. to get there i just where, where what part of georgia is that in where, where, is that north atlanta uh about north an hour hour and a half south of tennessee on 75 okay. our facility is phenomenal we we I can't go into too much detail, but we, we do a lot of uh, firearms training and uh, a lot of uh, involvement with local law enforcement. Nice. We have a, it's a members only facility that's absolutely phenomenal with restaurants and lounge and uh, a retail establishment area. Uh, we have, oh, we man. hold live concerts every, uh, every other week. We have one coming this Friday with John Barry. 
it's uh, a lot of the stuff we do is uh, promotional work for donations and charity and we're highly involved with law enforcement and helping them as well it's uh it's owned by um, two Christians that are just fantastic people husband and wife that really are just phenomenal people just phenomenal that people like constitution heaven to me brother it is I yeah it is I just got back from St. Simon, Georgia, and uh, and we're we're going to do a lot in Georgia this year. Of course, twenty twenty four huge, and it's one of the target states. But uh, man, I'd love to come out there and do something. Maybe we could do a maybe I bring Brad and we do a comedy in Constitution and and uh, and just have a good time. That would be that sounds awesome. You would yeah. love you would love it here. The, the the town of Kennesaw is one of the few towns in the country where it's a law for the homeowners to own a firearm. Nice. We have very little crime. Just about everybody walks around with a gun on their hip like the Wild West. And nice. uh, bad people just tend to not come to our city. I so, love nice. it. Yeah. Yes. That's a done You're deal. You're kind of place, brother. Let's find a date, man. That sounds awesome. That's awesome. Hey, We'd man, love to have I can't you. thank you enough. Oh, you bet. We'll make that happen. I'll talk to you offline, and and I'll okay. we'll link uh, Christopher. Christopher, I think you have his. I'll, I'll send that to you. But uh, yeah. anyway, listen, we love what you do. We appreciate it so much. Yeah. I appreciate you giving us those three things, um, really that any everybody should be doing, but but can do. And uh, we are we are just so appreciative of your time. I know you're taking time away from your family. Please give my love to from Kara on down. Tell them that I miss them. I can't wait to see them again. I love you, brother, and you, too, uh, you brother. mean the world to me. Well, right back at you, and good to meet you other guys. And, uh, man, I'm looking forward to coming out and spending some time with you all. That would be great. Yeah, real Fantastic. pleasure. Thanks for joining us. You bet. God bless you all. All right, God bless, bless you. you. Well, it's as I said, as advertised. Um, that is only a, a small snippet of Rick Green. He is uh, one of the most dynamic speakers you'll ever see. He goes for hours, and uh, his kids, well, they're grown, are some of the most amazing people you ever meet in your life. Just absolute is, freedom lovers, and they love Jesus. What is his website again? He has several ones, but uh, I think it's Rick Green, just rickgreen.com, I think. And then, of course, he's on Wall Builders Live. We should have some contact stuff, I think. Patriotatomy.com. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of them. That's one of them. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. When you type it's in rickgreen.com, it redirects to Patriot Academy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's one yeah. of the most amazing experiences ever. And I, and I got to be there several times. And, you know, I protected Rick and his family. Um, and I uh, protected David Barton, who he does the show with. And I can tell you, being behind the scenes, there's no difference. They are who you see. Rick yeah. is who you just saw um, all the time. I know I've been out to breakfast with them and their whole clan. And I can tell you, um, at at three thirty in the morning in the worst neighborhood in Philadelphia, at the twenty four hour diner, and they're the same. They're the same. They're wonderful people. And uh, Christopher, I, I'm just so excited to create an introduction for what you do uh, in your in your other career. And Watchful, I'm happy that you got to meet Rick and that he got to meet you. And folks in the chat, man, oh, man, I'll tell you what. I am really enjoying reading some of these uh, remarks. And I want you to know that, that um, I know all of us here. I don't speak for everybody, but I can tell you it's it's powerful some of the ways that you love on each other and care for each other and support and encourage each other is just amazing and uh, the sharing of resources and ideas and even sharing pain and sorrow Sean, and, um, yeah, I, yeah i have a comment from ls that says uh he's from the uk across the pond but it disagrees and says god and guns don't sit well i knew you'd well, have something to chime in on that well, you know, and God bless you. You know, I, I love um, I love the UK. I spent a lot of time in the UK doing uh, different things there. I love it. Um, I don't love the weather, but the people are amazing. They're amazing people, but they have been disarmed. We forget, you know, the type of government that they have been subject to uh, since they're, and they're, you know, a, a great old nation and we're just a young pup. But I can tell you this, they've been 
disarmed for a very, very long time. For sure. If you yeah. look, if you look up WW Greener guns, uh, Greener guns. I'm not related to them. We thought we thought that we were for a long time, and we had a we had a, a, a ancestry thing that said we were. But that's why you can't you can't always trust those ancestry things because sometimes they're not right. We went right to the right to the descendants and found out that that was not the case. But I bring them up to say, you, you know, uh, some of the greatest gun manufacturers ever in history come from England. And mm -hmm. they've broken their businesses down and broken them uh, through their socialistic, uh, insane ideas. And they've disarmed the public, even their police. You know, many of their police don't carry firearms. They have to get special permission. And look at uh, how to, they're treated. In, but the police are completely manhandled by yeah. the migrants. And here, I'll put this in context for you guys. Uh, Chicago, New York, L.A. have some of the strictest gun laws in the nation, but yet they have the worst gun crime in the nation. You come to my town in Kennesaw, everybody is packing. We have no crime. None. Yeah. Safest right. city that you can come to. You know, numbers don't lie, guys. It is what it is. You yeah. know, by taking guns out of the Americans hands or taking them from the citizens that are responsible, you're essentially disarming the public from protecting themselves because criminals are not going to follow the law. Criminals yeah. will always get access to weapons. And this is a prime example. Just look at New York, Chicago, Detroit, LA, strictest gun laws in the nation with the worst gun crimes in history. Chicago averages six to 12 homicides a day from from guns yeah it's uh the numbers don't lie it is what it is and you know what's funny is i served in law enforcement at many many different levels um and in in many different capacities one of them uh right above my shoulder here you can see me um in in one of the police jobs that that i did and i can tell you the, the issue is not guns the issue is has never been guns the issue is behavior, lack of respect, um, an, an abdication of any level of responsibility. And unfortunately, the mental illness issue and the, the addiction to drugs issue, humongous. It's just an enormous problem. And frankly, you disarm the citizens here, and I'm telling you, it's on like Donkey Kong. We, we will go from, from the level of crime we have now, which is uh, completely, completely too much um, and, and fully preventable, to a level of crime that is inconceivable in modern times. You know, they just showed on the news, um, not all the news carried this because it, it doesn't play well, but uh, they showed on the news... Uh, I won't say the names of the stores, but they're major chains. I'm not going to give them free advertising, yeah. but, but California. they, you know, California, yeah. um, Chicago, New York, um, uh, Minneapolis, they can't, now these are large chain drug stores. They are shutting down in an amazing, amazing rate. It's, it's just, it's spiraling, it's snowballing. And so, they're doing that because they can't survive in this environment. They can't survive when they have to lock everything behind a glass counter. And then people with, you know, masks on, sometimes they don't have masks on. They don't care. They're not going to get arrested. They come in, they smash with hammers, they grab whatever they want, and they dare you to step in your way. And the employees now are, are instructed, just walk out of the way. Just walk out of the way. Just walk away. Let them take whatever they want. And uh, it's just, you know, listen, listen, if you don't have a way, guns aren't for everybody. Firearms aren't for everybody. Some people shouldn't have them. They're not capable. They're not sane, sober. Um, they're not prudent. And, and they shouldn't because they can't be trusted. But um, those same people can't be trusted with knives. They can't be trusted with baseball bats. You know, more people die from uh, baseball bat injuries in America than from guns. But you're, we're yeah. led to believe that guns just jump up off a table and, and kill people, and they don't. Uh, the, the fact of the matter of it is, is um, between 2,500 and 5,000 times a day, 
it's not reported in the news, but 2,500 to 5,000 times every day in this country, a, a legal firearms, concealed carry firearms um, possessor goes from being a victim to the victor. And many of them, they don't have to even fire a shot. That's the difference between a, a polite, armed, and trained society. And depending on police, listen, when, minute, when, when seconds count, the police are only minutes away, right? It's you, you've got seconds and the police, they can't get there. And right now, some police departments are down 50%. They're offering, uh, m one of my old police departments is offering $15,000. One of the other ones is offering $25,000 as a sign-on bonus. They're dropping the, the requirements. Um, they're, they're, they're really shrinking the, the, uh, the requirement, taking away things that, that, that you would have never thought would have been uh, a requirement that would ever be taken away. But they are because they can't get people. And even with all that, they can't get people. Why? Because nobody wants to serve a public who, number one, doesn't respect them. Number two, um, quite frankly, doesn't support them. And that's why today's show, this morning's show, Rockin' for Heroes, that's why it's so important because they're honoring them and saying, hey, we got your back. Really and truly, we got your back. Yeah. Yep. That's all I have. I'm all, I'm all spent. <laughs> what's, what's, what's that epic. line? Where there's more people that are uh, murdered with hammers than assault weapons. I just, yeah. That was a recent thing uh, in an in a article. Or, but it's just like people, there's the stigmatism with weapons and firearms that because you can hurt somebody at a distance that they're the number one cause. The number mm -hmm. one cause of death is like heart disease and stroke. You know, people put the same energy, if they actually cared about saving lives, they would put that same energy that they put into taking weapons out of people's hands and put it into actually educating them and changing the food in the country. But for some reason, because of this perception that weapons are dangerous at a distance, they focus all their time on that. There's an agenda behind it. It's a political, oh, 100%. you get these, you get these people in office that use this as a, as, as a means to, you know, push their agenda to it's scare tactics. They're using mm -hmm. scare tactics because weapons seem scary. But the truth is, is an armed society is a polite society. Mm -hmm. And that's what people should be saying, not that weapons are scary and it makes people dangerous because there's a lot of people that were raised with weapons that aren't dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, for it's sure. just, it's just a, it's their narrative because their, yeah. their goal is to disarm the public so that they can have full totalitarian that's control. Right. And there's right now, they motive. yeah, right now they can't do that because the civilians are armed in the way our constitution is written is that that we the people have the say it's not the yeah. federal government yeah unfortunately though if they disarm we the people they can move in by force but yeah I think that's one of the that's one of the reasons i think america might actually be mystery babylon because of that statement um, that nobody would, I can't remember what it is, but it's, uh, nobody would go up against Babylon. And when Babylon falls, Babylon has fallen, Babylon has fallen. It's like this, it's finally happened. When you think about, I think about America because you know, that saying there's a gun behind every blade of grass, like that is what keeps invaders out of our country is knowing they're, they're going to be up against opposition everywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what we are, but that's one of the things I think of. I don't know if we're, you know, mystery Babylon, but that's one of the things that can't comes to mind. Yeah. So I know, I, I know I said, I only had one more thing, much like Rick. But here's, but here's the thing. Kip, Kip said something really powerful in the comments. And that was law enforcement uh, to some degree. I, I think it's a small degree, no longer represents the, the, uh, the citizen because they just do what they're told by the politicians who are now running police departments. Now I'll say that's not the case in every, every place, certainly not in Kennesaw. Um, yeah, certainly not, not in here. a lot of the, yeah, certainly not in a lot of the police uh, uh, departments around me, but I will tell you this. Um, and I, and I write about this. I speak about this, the left and, and, and Rick talked about this. You, you say what we want. The left was very effective. They did a great job getting their, agenda into every single political job 
every single appointed job, every single elected job, uh, from dog catcher to president, they have been so effective at that war, co-opting the language, co-opting the vernacular. Uh, you can't say this word or that word anymore because, well, that yeah. means this now and that now. And they've changed the etymology of words to be, uh, our vernacular is completely changed. And so they've been highly effective and it's time we win it back. And uh, people yeah. like Rick Green and, and what he does are great at that, but we can each be, remember what he said, what did it start with? Get in the word, study the word. Don't become right. a religious Rottweiler and be against you know everybody and yell at everybody. Oh no, you're stupid because you believe this or believe that. At a certain point, you know, we just have, look, we have to accept. We have to accept people and, and be kind to them. And uh, they shall know us by our love. Our, the, the disciples, well, how are they going to know? Well, they'll know us by our love for our one another. Yeah, but, but they'll know us first by our love for one another, how we, yeah. we got each other's back and, and, and that time is gone. Why? Because now people get arrested for stepping into in between a killer and a person on the subway who is about to be killed. And they get locked up and they go to jail and they lose yeah. everything they've ever worked for. You know, yeah. people are yep. afraid. It's time for us. Listen, they would never do it. The bad guys would never do it if there were 10,000 people ready to pounce and say, oh, no, not here you don't. Not here you don't. You remember yeah, the story right. uh, during the Antifa stuff, the story, and it was a true story, the two husband and wife attorney lived in this beautiful gated community. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Sure. And, and the gate that was torn down by the Antifa terrorists um, was $180,000. I mean, we're not talking about a cheap gate. They tore it down. They totally destroyed it. And then they entered the property of this family. And, you know, they came out with an empty AR and an empty pistol, which was totally stupid. Um, I, I get where their head was, but it's, you know, no. An empty gun is a terrible battering ram. And so, but they came out and they, and they were effective at scaring them off of their property. Well, guess what? They lost their they lost their right to possess and carry firearms. Um, they they had they spent, I think it was something like a half a million dollars in court, yeah, uh, trying to recover from everything and and their law practices, everything. It was terrible. And those yeah. same neighbors, many of those same neighbors, who immediately after it happened thanked them because they turned. And instead of attacking the neighborhood and setting the neighborhood on fire and raping all the women like they said they were going to do out loud on tape on video they said they were going to rape all the women they're going to rape all the girls and they're going to set all the houses on fire with with the homeowners inside it they were thanking them initially but then well hmm. you know what i don't want this to come on me i i don't want any of this stink to get on me that's on you so i'm going to lay back and say oh i wasn't for it i I wasn't for it. I no comment. Um, hmm. It's it's chickens. It's just yeah. chicken. You can't be chicken. This is a war. Um, listen, it's a spiritual war. Um, it is a, a, a war along many, many. It's a war of paradigm. It's a war of mindset. It's a it's a war of of wealth. Um, it's a, it's a war of freedom and liberty. And ultimately, it comes to this. Look. You say what you want about guns. If you don't want a gun, great. I'm hey, I I'm not one of those people that says, well, you got to have a gun. If you don't want a gun, if you for a moment think, you know what, I'm not the, I'm not a good candidate to have a gun, then you know what you shouldn't do. You shouldn't have a gun. And I support your decision, and I'm willing to help protect you. However, however, what I am unwilling to do is to be subject to your stupidity and your fear. I'm unwilling to do it. I'm unwilling to hide in my house and hope they don't come get me. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing yeah. it. I spent far too long and gave far too much to this, the freedom of this country. I am not sitting hiding in a closet somewhere, praying to God they pass over my house. Oh, no. Yeah. Not going to happen. Anyway, Amen. that is all I have. Yeah, LS made a comment uh, in here. He said that if you if it's if you have an item, you're more likely to use that. That's actually not true. 
Yeah. Uh, and that's one it's of the awesome. first things you actually learn if you take any classes with firearms is when you know the gravity of what a weapon can do, um, how easily it can kill, you are less likely to actually use it and only use it in the gravest extremes. In fact, there's a book by Masad Ayub, who is a fantastic teacher, yeah. Uh, who does a lot of YouTube videos on when to use firearms. He's written a book called In the Gravest Extreme, which should be fundamental reading for anybody who owns a firearm because it will teach you the, the when it's right and when it's wrong. And more often than not, it's wrong. You only use the weapon in the gravest extreme. And any serious gun-holding person knows that, and they're less likely to use it. Yeah, Absolutely. good point. We, we, teach, we teach that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but many good points. It's, um, you nailed it, Sean, and watchful, you're spot on. So it's, for me, I just choose not to live in fear. I, I yeah. know that, that God has my back. I don't worry about people having my name and knowing where I live. You could easily find out everything you need to know about me. You know, my name is public. My address is public. I don't worry about that stuff. If it's my time, it's my time. It, it is what it is. But I walk yeah. around with the armor of God, and I challenge anyone that does not. So it, that's just how it is in my eyes. Amen. 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 Great show. All right, guys. Well, show. it was fun. I'm going to go tend yeah. to the yeah. kids. I'm glad we actually had a show a little earlier tonight. And I, uh, I know that uh, a lot of our guests probably missed it because we announced it last night. We announced it this morning, but I didn't I didn't really say anything uh, on any of the community boards that we had sh switched the time. So if folks missed the morning show, then they're going to show up at nine and be like, uh, what happened? But anyways, watch it on replay. Yep. Sean, and I enjoyed like and your subscribe guest. Subscribe and share. Yeah, like, Thank you. subscribe, and share. Thank you, guys. Many more guests to come. Many more guests to come. Uh, uh, I'm going to ask Eric Metaxas if he if he's got time to be on, and and certainly David Barton. I'm telling you, one of the most amazing people. Bill Federer, one of the greatest historians of our time, uh, and a world renowned expert on Islam. Um, uh, you know, we're we're working on a lot of really amazing people. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to create really powerful content that is rooted completely in the word. And that's uh, that's what I love to do. Hey, tomorrow night, we have a uh, I forget his last name, but his first name's John. He's had several NDEs. He's been on Deep Believer. I believe Kip was in contact with them. I can't remember the details. But anyways, the point is tomorrow night we have a guest, an NDE guest, and it's going to be exciting. That's nine o'clock tomorrow night. Awesome. Awesome. Shalom. Shalom, everyone. Shalom, All right, shalom. guys. Have a good night. Thank you so much for being here. Later, brother. Later.